Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. With Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles. On first and ten, golf. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Now golf on first down. Breaks through the contact. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first down, it's Gurley. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now it's gone off the bootleg. Rush coming, and he's taken down. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. A shotgun snap for Goff. And this is going to be incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep is Darren Sproles. Philly's offense getting the ball again here in just a second. And, but if you look at the NFC picture as a whole, a lot of talk, understandably so, about the Rams and the Saints, the Panthers even. But what kind of chance do you give the Eagles of getting back to the Super Bowl? I'd give them a good chance because Carson Wentz continues to get better coming back from the knee injury. They made the deal to get Golden Tate, which gives him another weapon at receiver, and that's starting to get better for them. Zach Ertz has been tremendous at tight end. They need to get healthier in the offensive line, get that back intact, and that defense can be very, very good, especially Fletcher Cox wrecking things from his defensive tackle position. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. 
Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to let one fly for Tate. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. Room here to run. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Out of the gun, gone. It's complete. This is Todd Gurley. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. First and 10 at the 19. Here's Goff. And that's going to be incomplete. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. From the gun, here's Goff. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, and when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. Throwing on third, gone. And that will be incomplete as well. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. 
They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. On second down now, Adams. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. And he's able to get more than half of what they needed. That brings up a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And, oh, look at that, a diving catch. 17 yards is the pick up there for number 17. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down, spectacular catch, turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. They'll try the left side. Adams fighting his way through contact. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Love the run right there, and when you analyzed him coming out of college, when you tried to put a grade on him, you saw the flashes while he was in school, but you didn't see the full production. You didn't see the finished product. He's a little bit raw, but you can see why people liked him. Those types of runs make you think there's plenty more there, and we'll see if that continues for him. He's going to let one fly. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Golden Tate, 43 yards. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. Well, they had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran at the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear a coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went on past them and caught the pass for a touchdown. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now, the Los Angeles Rams, they continue to be a great story this season. A solid, solid team. That wonderful start, although they did lose week nine, obviously, to New Orleans. So the 72 Dolphins celebrated again. Yeah, they got a chance to hug it out and still be the last team to go undefeated in modern football. 17-0 that team was, but let's face it. No one shedding any tears for the Rams after that loss to New Orleans. They still have weapons galore on offense. A stout defensive front led by Aaron Donald leading their division. They're aiming for the playoffs. And as all their moves in the offseason and during the season, picking up Dante Fowler Jr. to rush the passer, they're shooting for the Super Bowl.
Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards, but also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. First down, L.A., golf finding Higby. I felt that one all the way up here. How about that big man laying out and making that catch? Yeah, that wasn't a 180-pound wideout. That was a tight end. <laughs> Goff on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they went the wrong way there, losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I'd say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. Do you see how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. Third and long, it's gone. And that's caught left side, it's Woods. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. They start on the ground with Adams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Matt Longacre coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. From the gun, it's Wins. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. There we go, there we go. My now a play fake. Wentz. And that is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. 
And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. He's letting it fly for Cooks. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Back to the air, Goff on second down. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Second down pass play, got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Black 20! Gurley again here on first down. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Turns and gives to Gurley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. The Rams on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and six. Here's gone. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled 
and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. Second and nine now from the 21. Wentz to throw on second down. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Now Wentz on third down, and he connects with Ertz. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That eagle first down, Wentz to Ertz. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And that'll set him back five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. And they'll run it here with Adams. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That one good for 12 yards. And it'll be second down. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. On second down, Adams. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Hurts has it left side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. On first down, Adams. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. The tackle there by Mark Barron. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down, here's Wentz. He completes it to Tate. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Last 
fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league, those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? He'll get it up the middle. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. The Ram fans in this old stadium on their feet. Third and goal. Shotgun now for Wentz. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. A great effort there. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Eagles had six to their lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. It oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Elliott now to add the extra point. Elliott good on the extra point, and the lead is now Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, he's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Oh, he's able to out-muscle him here as he pulls it in. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You know, Charles, it is hard to believe that we are sitting on the doorstep of Thanksgiving week. Already that time of year, but it always gives us good football. One of the games on Thanksgiving, Chicago and Detroit, that'll get the party started at 1230 Eastern. One of the traditional games, Detroit hosting, Dallas hosting, but in this case, we will stay in the Motor City. And this is the longest running annual series in the NFL. A lot of people think about Detroit and Green Bay or Chicago and Green Bay. 
It's Detroit and Chicago. They've met at least once a year since 1930, 178 times total. And they just met two weeks ago in Chicago and going to do it again. The offense on third down tonight. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. before they bring him down right at the 45. Goff to Woods as the Rams move the chains. Now a first down throw, Goff. They got a man over the middle, it's Woods. And he's gonna get this down near the 30 yard line. The 15 yards there on the catch and run. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. On first down, gone. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, right there on the coverage. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Goff now looking to throw. This will be caught inside the 10. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Goff throwing again. Dumps it off to Gurley. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Again, golf. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, LA. Tyler Higby as the first half is winding down. And the Rams have got this back to a one score game. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that slices the lead down to 17-10.
Zerline out now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Well, the clock showing just 16 seconds till the half as they line up first and 10. The drive starts with a handoff to Adams. And he powers his way up past the 30. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. This fielded at the two. Breaks a tackle. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Complete left side, the tight end Rodgers. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. On second down now, Adams. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Hang in there now, hang in there now. Three down, three down. Don't go. Now a play fake here on first down. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. And Dominican Sue coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Eagles on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Working from the gun, Wentz. And Tate's got it. A pretty good mark there. They needed 14. They got 14 on third down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was something guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Give him eight on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. 
they've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Here's Adams. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On first and 10, here's Wentz. Incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short game down to about the 33. There to make the tackle, Samson Abuka. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Eagles on third down. They've been outstanding. Seven first downs and eight tries. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's wins. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Nothing open downfield, and he had to get that one out in a hurry because he just knew he was about to take a big shot. Probably couldn't get his legs into the throw. Became an all-arm throw trying to check it down to his running back. Incomplete. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And Elliott puts this one through. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration. Now, seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Goff now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun on third down, gone. And this is going to be incomplete. 
Right, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. <laughs> Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. On second down, Adams. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Eagles on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This time they face a third and two. Again, here's Adams. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. The Eagles send out their punter now as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Taking it about the 36. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Establish the run game here. Gurley. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Yet another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, here's Goff. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. They go play action with Gurley. Now golf. 
It's caught left side by Coates. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards on the play. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he's got this one down to the 10. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second down, here's Goff. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. A shotgun snap for goal. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. In for the score. And the Rams are able to get back within a touchdown. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it's a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. To throw, it's Wentz. He's got his man. This is Tate. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Now Wentz throwing on second down. Jeffrey breaking the tackle. Going to throw right side here, complete. The 30, the 20. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Sean Jeffrey, 72 yards. And the Eagles add on to their lead. And he puts it through. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Golf. Over the middle complete. That's Reynolds. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out. And by a few inches, that'll be a first down. 
this possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Goff now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Now gone. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They give him a gain of 38. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Now Goff on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. On second and ten, gone. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley. Third down here. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they look to throw. And the third down pass falls incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He made his first attempt, this from 45. And Zerline's kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And out now come the Eagles. The field goal we just saw has this now at a one-score game. And on this side of the football, things are getting pretty tenuous, a little stressful. Blood pressure up a little bit, you think? I think up a lot of it. Uh, could you imagine <laughs> taking the pulse right now? It might be like a jackhammer out there on that side of the ball. But here's what the deal is. I think what we've observed is a team that's been playing not to lose as opposed to playing to win. They've got to get back to that, and that means opening things up again, being a little more free in what they're trying to get done on offense. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. All right, Charles, as a former defensive back, how disheartening to actually catch it but just not be able to stay in bounds there defensively. Well, extremely because you know the rap against us defenders is that we're frustrated offensive guys who can't catch. And he caught it. Just couldn't get his feet down in bounds. It's that second part that finished off the play for him. On second down now, Adams. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll be third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Now Wentz on third down. And he connects with Ertz. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. I know when you're looking at the scoreboard clock, we're getting near the end of this game. But they were in what was really called four-minute offense. 
And that's practice being taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. But bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it a costly turnover. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Go, by 20. Second and 10, golf again. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby, and that'll make it third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Rams on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 10. Out of the gun, gone. This is caught, it's Cooks. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Goff on first down. His throw caught right around the six. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's gonna be a long day for you. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. From the gun on third down, wins. Ertz over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game. It's a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism. Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Flush to his right. Powering his way forward. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. 
So the youngster able to use the legs to pick up the first. And one of my pet peeves when they see this guy play, when Carson Wentz takes off running the football, I always hear people go, oh, he's sneaky athletic. No, he's athletic. Watch him do it. It's an integral part of the quarterback run game, and he gets it done very, very well. You don't like sneaky athletic, do you? That's no, just not, kind of a jab in the back. Yeah, not when it doesn't apply. I think that's a stereotype that needs to be broken down for him. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Well, they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. From the red zone now, Wentz. He finds Aguilar over the middle. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork we saw, good job defensively to recover. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. He lost two there, and it's third down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now a play fake. Wentz. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So a big, big kick coming now for Jake Elliott. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And the kick by Elliott is good. And that will break our tie and give them a three-point lead. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. On first down, gone. And incomplete on the deep ball. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And now it's second down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. My 20. Back to the air, Goff on second down. And his throw is incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it, when you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck, 
You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Throwing on third. Gone. Wide open receiver complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 13 and also a first down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. My high school coach, John Ford, used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. To the air again, gone. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Now a first down throw, gone. Able to get away. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again, he picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him, double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll bring up second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. A play fake to Gurley, now gone. This will be caught inside the 10. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 23 yards on the play. Three down, three down. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gutting for on first and goal. Throwing again is gone. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Eagles have recovered. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they got a chance to win the game. Instead, they coughed it up. I don't think next week of practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. Imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Oh! 
on now. All right, come on now. Let's go. To throw his wins. And Jeffrey's got it. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books. But now they have to make that up again, don't they? Every penalty so critical at this stage of the game is now they've got it third and long. A carry for Adams. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. Now here's a whistle and a timeout. It's called by the receiving team here. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Eagles send out their punter now. And you wonder, could they possibly think about taking a safety here? A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. And the Rams getting set to go now. They're only in need of a field goal. A decent amount of time on the clock. So. Tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all oh, the time. They practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. They're running with Gurley. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. And with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it. just over 30 seconds left. from Tennessee, John Kelly. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. 
It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. They'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. Well, Charles, a game and a decision that people may be talking about tomorrow for sure. Had a chance at a long field goal there at the end to try and tie it. They elect to not kick it, and they lose the game. And I think what we'd all love to see is that little slip of paper that the special teams coach handed to head coach before the game that said, this is where our kicker is good from today. This is where he feels confident because that might be the absolute mark that tells us, okay, Maybe we have to run more offense because maybe he doesn't feel good about kicking it from this distance. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Los Angeles.